A vector database is a method for storing and retrieving data based on similarity. Let's take a look at how vector databases work at a high level, and I will show you how you can start using them at home using Python, ChromeDB, and Langchain. In a vector database, when we store some data, we also create an embedding of that data, which is stored alongside the data. The embeddings are a compressed representation of the most important features of the data and they are created by using the encoder part of a neural network that is trained to reconstruct the original data using that compressed embedding. These embeddings are stored as vectors, hence the name vector database, and just like we can have an xy coordinate in a two-dimensional vector, an embedding is an n-dimensional vector, which has a spatial position in that n-dimensional world. When we are retrieving data, we normally provide some sort of query, but for a vector database, we provide some data, an embedding is calculated for that data, and that embedding is also located somewhere in our n-dimensional space, and all the results that are closest in that n-dimensional space to the data we provide is returned. Now that we know how vector databases work, let's take a look at this Google Colab notebook, which is linked in the description, so we can learn how to use it in Python. We start by installing all the packages required for this demo. Then we import everything required for our vector database, loading files, splitting files into smaller parts, and custom embeddings. We set the environment variable for our OpenAI API key. We create a function to load different files based on their extension using the PDF and the text loader. We define a list of file paths to the files we want to use. We pass that list to our load documents function and store the documents. We then define the settings for how to split this large amount of document text by defining the size of the parts and the amount of overlap of each part. We then create a token splitter passing these settings as arguments. And then we use that splitter on our list of documents to create smaller parts of our document, which we will call pages. If we look at our pages, we can see that they each contain some text and some metadata about the file that it came from. We can now use the chroma from documents function to create a chroma database using these pages. Chroma uses a default embedding which it gets from Hugging Face, but we can use our own custom embeddings like this. Now that we have stored all our data, we can start retrieving some of our data. So we define some text for which we want to find similar text. Then we define how many similar pieces of text it should return from the database and ask it to return similar parts. If we print out the similar part on screen, we see that the text is related. If we really want to leverage the full potential of a vector database, we can combine it with something like ChatGPT in order to create some sort of long-term memory. So let's do that next. We define the OpenAI key again, but now for our GPT models. We create one large string which we call context, which contains all the data retrieved from the vector database. And then we create our final prompt using our context and our query. We define the name of the GPT model we want to use and we define how deterministic the model is. Then we prompt the GPT model and show the response. As you can see, this is a proper summary of what the actual conclusion was for the paper. I hope you learned something new in this video. If you did, please leave a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, consider subscribing. Have a nice day.